Hey, I'm Kerwin Frost, and on this episode of Kerwin Frost Talks, we have a very special guest. Um, she, she's an icon, uh, paved the way for many. You know, she's deserved a lot of apologies, oh and uh, one of the greatest writers of our time, a SZA. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Thanks for having me here, home. SZA. You're welcome, Kerwin. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. You're such a gem to the world. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so, um, what have you been up to lately? I'm excited. Okay, so yesterday, wow, I get to tell someone. <sighs> yesterday, I was in the studio with Justin Timberlake, yeah. and that was kind of nuts. Um, and we made a really cool song, and I couldn't believe it. What does it sound like? Justin Timberlake. Like some classic. But how'd that come together? Future sex. I don't know. He just reached out? Kind of. But I'm like, we're on, oh, we're on the same label, I heard. Which oh. I didn't know until like the end of yesterday. And then he was just like, I want to work with you. And I was just like, why? And then he was just like, shut up, let's just make stuff. And then I did. And we did, and it was great. And it was really great. And I couldn't believe like how much fun I had. And I learned so much from him, and it was just crazy. And he Damn. was doing all the Justin Timberlake moves and shit. He was doing the moves while he was singing? On me. While he was like listening to stuff, and I couldn't believe it. That's crazy. Okay, I was like, you're Justin Timberlake right here. Yeah, that's pretty okay. fire. <laughs> Damn. How long have you been living here? Um, not very long. Like less than a year, like less than half a year. We just move around so much, we're just never right. here. So Damn. we just and we are here, it feels so peaceful. It's like I can't front. Our last house was cool, but this house feels like when we come back from somewhere crazy like Australia or like I don't know, like a funeral or something wild. It just feels like a very peaceful place. Yeah. And then the baby girls come over. They bake us like brownies and shit. What, the next door neighbors? Mm -hmm. Sophia and Isabel. I was going to call them over here with the miniature horses and see what they had to bring us today. Damn. But we'll see. That's fire. That might be fun. How many times have you gone back and listened to Control since uh, it's been out? None. Like I listened to it halfway, like once. Like three songs. One. And then when I, if I'm performing, then out my dog is so disrespectful. Yeah, pig wants um, to be Can I pick her up? Yeah. yeah. She's also bleeding. <laughs> She's bleeding. It's okay. Okay. That's all right, pig. You sure? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Um, Do you care about your pants? No. Okay, that's the bottom line. Um, it's all right. Um, so you said you haven't listened to it? Nah, I hate hearing my own voice. It's kind of stressful. Come here, Andy. It wasn't personal. Yeah, yeah. no, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Why do you hate hearing your own voice? It's, it's, it's just such a good album. Um, like, for me, for when I heard that. it. I don't know. For like, me, what? Oh, I'm sorry. For me, when I heard it. It really spoke to me, and you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh yeah, you know, the song, the album's about like hoeing," and <laughs> but like for me, yeah, no. it wasn't just that though. It was kind of like more just like really being comfortable in your own skin and kind of like coming into the game, just like this is my life, like this is what I'm actually going through. Yeah. And even on songs like like Twenty Something, yeah. I think I was like. I was like still living in the projects in Harlem listening to 20 something. I was like, like you don't know what the next step for you is and you're trying mm -hmm. to figure it out. But like, it, it kind of spoke to me in that way. Like I even have the Control album tattooed. No, right that's here. not real. Yeah, it's real. That's fake. Those are the little ones that we have in the house. Dude, I got this when the album came out to celebrate. No, you did not. Yeah, it did. Those are the stick on tattoos that we have in the no. house. No, you're bugging. Did you? You gave him the stick on ones in the house? No. I got this. Let me look at your fucking belly, bro. Look, I got it when the album came out. You're a liar. So that's They fucked up this one. Okay. But then I had him redo it. Seriously. <laughs> you gave these to him? <laughs> you just found them in my house and put them on your body? No, I got this when the album came out because it spoke to me. Because it's weirder for you to pick them up in my house and put them on your body. <laughs> you think I would just touch things in your house that weren't mine? Yes. I got this when the album came out. <laughs> You're tripping. Your wife has to trip it. Um, that's a great placement. <laughs> Honestly, Thank you. it Thank is. You. Damn. It's strong placement. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like my album was really just 
um, it was a head fuck. It was just really yeah. hard. It was just hard. No one wanted to like ride with me or just like help me make shit. And yeah. I just had to, but I really went within and like learned a lot about myself. Yeah. And I think I work well with doubt. I really well. Like I do well. I feel like before my album, everyone like after my after Z, everyone was like, yeah, like she's on that whisper shit. Like yeah, it's yeah. just gonna be like some real like boring shit or whatever the case yeah. may be. And then I couldn't get no writers to sit down with me. And I couldn't like figure out, I don't know, I just had to figure out that I really don't give a fuck. And then niggas don't know me. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of times people get confused into thinking like, oh, like people, what people are saying has to be true, but that would imply that niggas knew you. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. But for 100%, you know that they don't. Yeah, so it's just yeah. like, I don't know, or it's like even when I was 200 pounds mm -hmm. and I lost my weight and everyone right. was like, ah, oh, but it's like, again, you don't know me. You don't know So it's yeah. like, you only know this section of my life where I was thick as hell right, and right. dressing a certain way and X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And this really seems like something new to you, but it's like, yeah. I, you know, I, this is just, I fluctuate all the time. I change right. who I am inside and outside, like right. every six weeks, yeah. days, hours. <laughs> Damn. Sorry, well, I feel like anything's possible. Sorry. No, no, that's cool. <laughs> Let's go back a little bit. Just like, what was your life pre, pre even 2012? What? Like, that when was you dropped wild. 2012 was when I dropped my first mixtape, or what? That C is around Z. Yeah. And S. But before all of it. Um, before all of that, I was bartending at the strip club. I was bartending at the strip club. Yeah, but you don't drink clubs. that much, right? I don't drink. At all. Which is funny because I think like 38% of the bar's revenue comes from the bartender. Right, drinking, right, right. Yeah. Which is kind of fucked. Yeah. And the pressure to drink is like insurmountable. Yeah. So they were like, yeah, That's yeah. A fact. I was also like 17 breaking the law and shit. Like you're supposed to be 19 Damn. to bartend in New Jersey. Actually, right. Yeah, but it was very, 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 very fun. Yeah. So I was like, Damn, let me just um let me just Google how to make like the main shit that niggas be ordering. So like right, right, right. Oh, rum and coke, henny and coke, yeah. Remy and whatever, because you yeah. know all the niggas love Remy. And then it's a strip club, so like yeah. martinis, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And then like I just tried to move as fast as I could. Man. And I'm really good with like multitasking and yeah. just like doing shit. So for me, it was like easy to take orders and talk to people though. Like I like people, time, right, so it was right. easy for me to like, I don't know, Socialize I, I built a clientele. So yeah, I bartended for like, every time I got a regular job, yeah. in between and I failed at my regular job or got fired, I would just go back to the strip club Damn. and make mad bread. And honestly, that shit paid for my studio time more than anything. Wow. Right, Cause I had the time to work in the studio, even though I was playing like 14 hour shifts. Cause you know, right. daytime studio, Yeah. I mean daytime strip club. Then you change it to nighttime. And if you work double shifts, you you working the whole day. Right, right. So you get there at 10 a.m. and you leave at like 5 a.m. What's the vibe of working in there though? Did like anything creepy ever happen? Um, not creepy, but like it's so crazy. You just learn the hardest facts of life. Yeah, it's yeah, so and how shit moves. Yeah, it's like no one really gives a fuck and everything, like everyone is expendable right. in that environment. So it's like Everyone is what? Expendable. What does that mean? I think it just means that like niggas is interchangeable and it's not right, like, right, right. people lack like yeah. value or high turnover. Sometimes I um like a like, like replaceable right. type shit. I knew like this club promoter. Mm -hmm. Um and I I like don't go to clubs or like I really never drink. Me neither. Like ever. Unless I'm like DJing and I'm just nervous. Okay. But um Liquor makes me more nervous. Huh? Liquor makes me way more nervous. Really? Yeah, I mean, it turns me into like a weird ass person. Oh no. I had to excuse myself from dinner in Hawaii. We remember when we went to dinner with <laughs> that man. Oh, okay, so I was at dinner, I had two glasses of red wine and I started giggling and sweating at the same time and I yeah. had to like get up and excuse myself and I started crying. <laughs> but oh, like yeah. I wasn't sad, I was right, just right, like right. I had no control over myself. I don't drink for that reason. But what I was gonna say was <laughs> for a week I just like started I just went to the club with him. Like just to watch, yeah, and like just to watch human beings and how they interact in clubs, and it like it was making me so depressed, like just watching it. But <laughs> for a couple of reasons, I was like, well, first, I'm never gonna be like someone who can just be in a crowd and like, like enjoy whatever being played there. Yeah. But also, just like 
the fucking mentality of someone who like goes to a nightclub and 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 picking that out was for you was being a bartender at the strip club kind of like that like where yes. you like but that's why it was fun. Yeah, yeah, Because like, yeah, I was playing right, this right. role. Like, I'm from the suburbs. I right. went into this random ass bar where I knew yeah. nobody knew me. I made up a fake name. And yeah. like, what was your fake name? Drink. I can't tell you because I didn't, you know, you just pop out and be like. Right, right. People remember, but they're not putting two and two together. Exactly. That's true. But, mm -hmm. but I, I will tell you. I'm going to tell you one day. Yeah. Um, Actually, one person commented, like, on my page, like, hey, are you? And I was just They like, got the quick block. Yes, yeah, yeah. Wait, gotta go yeah. right now. But it, <laughs> it was definitely, um, it was just cool. Like it was just like this whole other lifestyle. Right, right. But the one time I knew it was not for me is when I got hit in the eye with a hundred dollars. Wait, what? Yeah, this man had a hundred dollars. Yeah. His name was Supreme. Supreme, yeah. And he he's always a drug dealer named Supreme. Yeah, right? there there always is. Right. So he rolled up on Was this in New York or New Jersey? In New this Jersey. Is Jersey. Okay. And he The Dirty Dirty? Threw the hundred and it hit me in my eye. Just out your face while you're serving him a drink? Yes. While I'm serving drinks in the That's mix crazy. of the club and everything's That's going crazy. Up. Like imagine whatever Wayne song is popping at the yeah, time yeah, yeah. and it's going ham. Yeah. And I'm just mixing, 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 and everybody's going crazy throwing money. He throws a hundred dollars in my eye and I'm mad. Was was it one bill? No, a hundred. Uh, it was just a hundred ones not with the it. band on it. Yeah, not even he. Not, he his hand kept it together on the other uh, hand. What and a piece like of this. shit! It was OD, and I was yeah. like, uh, I was like, what the fuck? And I started going ham, and he was like, you should be grateful. And yeah. that's when I knew, like, I'm probably in the wrong place. Yeah, I what think. The, yeah. And that this is not for me, and I couldn't believe that. Like, it was just weird. It was just weird as fuck. Yeah, I wanted to beat him up. <laughs> that's crazy. But um, you had a bunch of other jobs, that, like. During that time, though, you like worked retail. Worked at Sephora. Worked at did some shit with Nike to do their like World Basketball Festival shit. They're like it was fun. Some New York shit. And then yeah, it was some corporate fun shit. Yeah. I like, learned a lot too. I also learned that I'm like not cut out for that shit because I'm right. wild sensitive. Yeah. And like you can't do that in corporate settings. But I'm sensitive in a strip club too. I had like a random show at CMJ for Trinidad James so long ago, wow. and it was after Sandy Hook happened. Okay. And I still got to the strip club but oh. I had to get to work because for some reason I can guarantee you in a crisis everyone's going to make it to the club yeah yeah somehow <laughs> so I, I got there wait sure enough, we were open. supposed to be there no this was, I had a show at the same time I was supposed to be working at the strip club oh okay okay so okay. I was like I told my boss I'm like hey like I lied and told him I had to babysit right like, and I like my sister I was like listen I can't I came so you can see my face but like I can't really be here my parents like ah, I got a babysit Hurricane Sandy was this also, when All Gold Everything was out? Yeah. Like, it had just yes. came out? Yes. Oh, this so you knew big. it was that time. I had to go. Yeah, you had to. I had this to go. Is all... So he's like, he's like, I don't give a fuck about your family. So then I had to turn up and quit in front of everybody because it was- Wait, like, Trinidad James said that? No, my boss. The boss. At, at the club. So then I lost my, that was my last show club job. Wow. And then ever since then, I went to the CMJ show that got shut down before he even got on stage. Right, right. And so it was for no reason. But it was all for a reason, because- That's such a crazy story. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are um, now. Um, I also, uh, I heard you found out about uh, Bjork from like stealing an iPod. Was that true? Yeah, it's true actually. 100% true. My friend Tess A. Bear. Yeah. She had an iPod. She gave a tub. And on this iPad, on this iPod, iPod was a yeah. whole bunch. It was an old one, like the thick, big brick one. Oh, was the video? You stole the video one? I guess it was that, yeah. That's mean. I know. But I found another one at my college. I went to like a pre-college program. Yeah. And it was like um, another old one, like the Nano. And I had like old Common and yeah. like most Dev, all kind of crazy shit on it. So I had this one iPod with all the Bjork. And we used to dance to Bjork and um and dance because I did American Ballet Theater and right. the fucking yeah, all of the that. nonsense. So all that emotive. And then in like special dance at my high school, it's like a whole company called Special Dance. Lots of that. That emo emoji and he, like all that type of shit is what yeah, we're dancing yeah. to. So it's like Imagine that. Imagine he that one song. I'm screaming. And Stop! It, it, that's not true. Have, oh, you, no? have you ever heard um, Just For Now? No. Come Get Fucked Up. I have a song for you. Is that the one that goes, Just For Now, Just For Now? Damn, yeah. <laughs> that's the one song. But no. Oh, no, there's the other song. Exactly. So now we're two in. I bet you I can find <laughs> Guarantee you I could. <laughs> I know. I used to, um, I had, I, I used to go, uh, when I was a teenager, 
I would go to. Well, uh, that's how niggas do me, by the way. They'd be like, so that has that one song. And they'd be like, no, it's that one song. And then they'd be like, what? Who says yeah, that? Yeah. And then you'd be like, nah, but then it's this other one. And then niggas be like, what? We're three songs in. That's crazy. <laughs> now the whole album's gone. Damn. I believe that's how things go in my brain. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta change that. But I don't know. It'd be like that. The internet is a wild place. I can't it's know. not true. Okay. You have a lot of songs. Thank you. Um, but when I was a kid, I would go to, uh, <laughs> so the, these white kids would have, uh, they would have freeze. You know what that is, of course, it's just, their parents are out of town and I would, I would go, but I would always like look for iPod nanos to steal. Like okay. not, it couldn't be an iPhone or like anything. Like it had to be the nanos okay. because people, it was just music. And I, I, that was my way of discovering a lot of music that I know was just like, and also just like, like tuning into the white ear. I'm screaming like, at the yeah, white ear. It's the white ear. So I would like, oh, that's what they listen to. That's Really? That's yeah. what you did into the white ear? Yeah, stealing iPod Nanos. Fair. So when I read that, I was like, oh, shit, that's crazy. Bar Mitzvah I, and Bar Mitzvah is how I turned into the white ear. Really? Yeah. And then also just like my high school, I went and my girls got true. Like I was surrounded by whites. Damn. But it was, yeah, it was like a vibe. I wasn't. Oh. I was in Harlem. Oh. Mm-hmm. You just like but learned. One time for Lennox, and then if you go a couple blocks up... You're in the, uh, the Upper West Side. Oh, fair. Like, so there, it's a little hike, you know, but it's green on the other side. Uh-uh. Um. <laughs> no, I was definitely, it was like the suburban ass. I was definitely talking black for a long time, I feel like, mm-hmm. in my life. Mm-hmm. And then it definitely, but I never felt like talking until right, like right. much later. Like when? Like when I was grown. Like, like. Senior year college, look, senior year in high school, then I moved into college. I still didn't feel token black. And then after, mm-hmm. when I was in the regular world and not in a school institution, and people had, like, could start like keeping it a buck with you and stop lying to you. Right, right. And then like they'd be like, no, you're black. Like this is, <laughs> this is what you're doing, and yeah. this is how we see you, right, and right. this is the box we're putting you in. Like, what do you mean? You're no longer a child. You're just now a, a black adult. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's crazy. And I didn't know what it was like to be in this weird sector when I had all this like Limp Bizkit and right, fucking right. Red Hot Chili Peppers yeah, and Good yeah. Charlotte and LFO, right. like all this fucking and Hanson and shit yeah, yeah, in my yeah. brain and Rolodex. Right, and right. then and then people are just like, but you wanna do, you urban, right? Like, right. Oh my but God. you like, you a hip hop princess, right? right? My first photo shoots, um, this magazine put a gold dookie chain around her neck, what? this dog, yeah, like okay. when she was a puppy, mind you. Yeah, yeah. A gold dookie chain around her neck, then they put like a gold dookie chain around oh my, my neck, God. and put like fur and feathers on me, and right, like right. a full outfit, and took me to a basketball court. Mm-hmm. And in New York, what? from my neighborhood in Maple. What photo shoot was us? And I can't tell you because it's not nice. It's a publication. It makes them sound bad. Yeah, but it's uh, <laughs> they're just doing what they knew. Right, right, but, right, um, right, yeah. So Low they key, said, I wasn't with it, Yeah. But it <laughs> should still be foul. But okay. so I was in the, you know, walking my French bulldog. Yeah. And they were like, and the title of the article was like, Hip Hop Princess. Like, That's so crazy. And I was just like, I feel you, but this Bjork album is yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. State of Emergency is my cut. Like, That's fine. And it's just random. That is just funny. Like, I feel like life has just been this weird. And then I got to the age where it's like, you don't really have to buy into that shit. Like it's just how people see you, and it's yeah. just like you could just be. How do you whatever. choose to deal with it? It's just like I mean. You gotta be yourself. Yeah. And then just it's like. Well, I mean, to be well, surprised. what I mean is like when you take on a job and then you just like kind of peep something. Where it's just like when do you decide to like step in and just be like, what the fuck is this? Like. Um. Whatever. Well, that was before I would be like. Now, like before I met a I really had to get balls and like be at a photo. But there's levels to that every right, single time. Right, like, yeah. I feel like. Me not having balls at a photo shoot to be like, but do you have makeup that matches me? Do you yeah. have, a, what is the, can I see the creative direction? Like, right, can I see, right, right. I want to do this now. Who's a photographer? Yeah. Asking questions before just feeling like I had to do everything because I really wasn't worth shit. So I just had to like allow whatever. Well, it's not that you're not worth shit. That's, but that's it's a like thought process when I was game. little. Yeah. Like, like, not when I was I little. I think that's like, everyone who's coming into the game. For but it's sure. just like, that's you got to do as much still, process as you want. I mean, as you can. But depending on who you're around, I still feel like that. Like, I was in a room with salons, like, working out the shit for the weekend and all the right, video, and I'm right. like, I can't say anything because I'm not worth shit, and this is a nulls. So let me what? be quiet. What? Are you fucking No, nah, real tea, real tea, real tea. But I learned a valuable lesson that you got to always speak up. Yeah. From, because it don't matter. Like, none, it just, you got to define yourself for yourself. Yeah. Or people just really take you on a really, even, it's not even a negative thing. It's not even that those people 
and you see me as a hip hop princess was fucked up. It's just yeah. that it wasn't me. It wasn't. And it wasn't it, true. And it, and that's the truth. You really just gotta. No matter how talented or anybody is, you have to right. find a way to not be afraid to be like. But let me tell you, like how I feel. And that's where I was. That was hard for me. Yeah. To speak up and say no is my biggest feat. I think in music or in life. Period. Why do you think? Why Why do you think you're not shit? Do you still think that? No, 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 no. I mean, um, <laughs> this is a funny question. It's, it's not that I just really feel like I have a long way to go. But in that, that was more so paraphrasing how I felt at the time when right. I was like in that specific space, afraid to tell people like, please don't put this dookie chain on me. Right, right, because right. Because it's not me. Yeah. And it's kind of racist that you see me this way. Just right, black right. And hanging with Kendrick Lamar. But yeah. in moving forward... It's more so about, it's like, I had the right to say that then. Yeah. It's, I just didn't know. You didn't know, that. yeah. Even when I hit Nabil, like, I wrote Nabil an email, the yeah. director, like, for so long, long ago, and I was like, this is when he had just done this stuff with Frank, and I never sent it, because right. I was like, I'm not, like, I don't have anything on my belt, like, he not going to work with me. Right, Fast right. forward, the first videos that were shooting with Control... And I hit a bill to do it, and he did it. And I had no new music out. This was before wow. Control even came out. Damn. So he had I just sent my email, right, 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 I, right. I would have just like been. You just walk. You just gotta walk through the door sometimes, and that's, I think that's what it is. It's like that weird mental, like fake game that you play with yourself. It's like it's when you allow yourself to feel away. I've learned that a little bit with just like taking opportunities, and a lot of people don't know how to. Yeah. And you'll just keep playing your part until it's over. Yes. But it's like you literally, you're in this room for a reason, like. I think it's like also like with me just even approaching people with situations is like in New York, you've definitely seen this. It's just like, yo, check out my mixtape. Yo, 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 I, I got a brand. Or it's like that shit 24 seven. So you kind of don't want to be that person to like a big bro or another person who's like you've looked up to, but it's like, right. you really don't get that the older generation is just like, I want to be what you're on or just like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what it is. I feel like, or just like, everybody's nervous, basically. Yeah. I feel like no matter what generation, I feel like if you are an old head or a young head, like nobody knows what's, what's going, going on. on. And, and once you get on the doing. spot, it's something that you always have to worry about. Right. And overthink and try not to be alone for too long and let your thoughts get you there. For real. Yeah. No, for real. Or you just create this bubble where, and you really maintaining your universe and you believe in your universe and I really feel like that shit creates a vacuum. Like the other day I was thinking like stress is what really causes age, like yeah. in the face and in right. the body. And like experiences, like negative yeah. traumatic experiences. So like people who if you're in the studio and just like working all the time or creating your bubble or you're just in your current world like yeah. all the time. Right. You just like might not age because you're just being your like vacuum of reality, not experiencing like when I'm in studio, I don't know what day it is. For yeah. I don't know what time it is. I don't know right, how right. close to 8 a.m. Yeah. I am. And I'm just like, whoa. Right, and, right. But that is real. I really feel like because the perception ceases to exist, it does cease to mm. exist. I swear to God. And I really feel like it's why you look at people like Pharrell or Justin Timberlake and you're just like, or Prince. Right. And you're just like, huh? Yeah. Where is the age at on these niggas? Like, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> and it's really because I think they're creating the bubble and they're living in the bubble for real. Yeah. And when you get in the outside bubble and you're like, I want to change for the outside. I want to do, I want to be in the outer. Yeah. If you're young or you're old, it creates this weird, like, Am I doing this right? Dissonance in the it's field really of like, less. yeah, of realities. Yeah, like, and, and now you're just like, your body is fucked up. aging. Yeah. Your body is now in the time space continuum because right, you allowed right. yourself to be in the like catch right. up game. Yeah. Because once you're trying to play catch up and learning shit, that means that your body's acknowledging you're behind. Right. And it's like, oh, whatever. It just fucks with your mental completely. But you look like a baby, so I figured. Me? Yeah, it's like you like living in your world you. probably. I do a lot. I, uh, I haven't really gone outside much. And then. I went to see um, Dev Hines had this free show in New York. Oh, I saw a video. It looks so fucked. Yeah, I was so. I, me and Aaron went, and um, and and when we got there, there was like just a bunch of kids like Kerwin, yo, oh my god, and I was like freaking the fuck out. But I, it's so fun to approach. Yeah, I know. See, that's what I, I know that, but it just, I was in for so long that I forgot yeah. that people do approach me. I just I'm. Yeah, I get it. Fucking pencil tatted on your cheek. Yeah, it's yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, do you go through that too, where you just forget? You're just like, oh, I'm scissor. 
Um, and then, like, you just get overwhelmed when people come up to you sometimes? Um, I've never said no to a photo. Really? Mm-mm, never. Wow. And I think the only time that really affects me is, like, if I'm sad as yeah. fuck. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like when my grandma was in the hospital in St. Louis and shit, right. and like people would walk up to me like at the gas station early and be like, "Oh, like what are you doing here?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, my grandma like really sick. She's in the hospital. She on life support." Like, they'd be like, "Oh, like can I get this picture though?" Are I'm you like, serious? Oh, mm-hmm. Yeah, on me. They'd be like, "For sure." They'd be like, "Can I get this video though?" Or I'd be in the airport like saying the same wow. thing. And they're like, "But can I? Let's just not just be yeah. And I just, I literally just move on for whatever I just said. And I'm like, "Yeah, right. of course." Oh. And then if we get into the vibe. But it's, it's like, because I know you don't give a fuck. Yeah, and that's okay. And um, we're just going to move on to that. But it's like, it's like, it does create a separation. Or I remember like when I got to Apple Store mm-hmm. and my Nana, my other Nana who had passed away, I lost all the pictures of her on my phone. Oh my God. And my phone was on some bullshit. And I was like, damn, like, can I, can you just try, like, Please, like whatever you can do to get this shit back. Yeah, and they, they got were like, back. and they tried, and then like that shit was just gone. Like it was just unretrievable. Right. So I was just like crying in the Apple store, and I was oh like, wow. God. And then the staff just came up and was like, can we take pictures? And I'm just oh like, oh my fucking god. Yes, of course you can. Have you ever, do you watch Atlanta? Atlanta? Yeah. The show, yeah. You know that one scene when um, Paperboy is like in the store and he just got shot. <laughs> He like got shot and he's in the store and then like some white kid just comes up to him. He's like, you're a paper boy, right? Oh my God. Like, let me get a photo. He's like just bleeding down no. the arm. It's like that exact same experience. No, I go, it's that. Yeah. It is yeah, that. Yeah, same. And I feel like, um, I don't know if it's that, but it's like, it's like, I try to think of it as this. Yeah. She's so cute. I'm sorry. No, I, I try to think of it as like every person that I meet, I'm supposed to meet either for me or for them. Yeah. Like it's easy to think in layman's terms that like this is your job to heal all these people and to be right, this right. force to spread yeah. your energy and like, it's like very but it's really here, but it's like not nah, but that's funny and it, and it's it's also just like you saw part of the story and you made a whole home. book yeah, yeah and good for like, you like yeah, good luck sure, yeah. on whatever you put together but yeah. it's like there's a reason why i feel healed when i meet people i don't know right, right. on the street yeah. who fuck with me right. i think their job is to heal me and teach me and yeah, do all yeah. these things for and vice versa receive that for same, real yeah, i think it has less to do with me being yeah. this force yeah it's than more me what you learning for it's like and experiencing them, yeah we're just like mirrors for each other like me learning and experiencing like all these interactions and just like i people telling me and putting me on to some of the craziest shit I never heard before. Like my phone case, this shit got my grandmother's name on it and like my rising and moon is from a random girl named Yoshi in Australia who walked into me outside my hotel. And then another, a lot of shit that I wear is like from fans, but it's like really important. I started getting into crystals because um, Manuel, um, Manuel and Melanie from, from Melody from New Zealand yeah. and Australia gave me my first piece of selenite wow. and started bringing crystals to me and all my friends and I really felt that and I was feeling like weird energy stuff and then I came back and I just got into my whole new crystal thing. I fuck with that. I feel like yeah. these people are destined and they're meant to be like, yeah. we just, family is like a frequency. Even me and Justin, before I was like, what the fuck am I doing in the studio with Justin Timberlake right now? This is crazy. Yeah, like, it's like, what? But when I heard his music and we started singing together and the harmonies and the note choices that we were finding together, it's like, oh, we speak the same language. Yeah, yeah. The same frequency, the same like, our spirit speaks the same, our ears speak the same language. Right. I understood where he was going before he could like finish a run and I'm like, okay, and I wanted to be in that in that tandem, in, yeah. that, in that process. But I think it's all about that, just frequencies, like the blending and the moving. It's, it's less black and white. Like you here to serve niggas, you here to be served. You right, here right, to. Right, right, right. It's yeah. just like I think we're all here serving each other. Yeah. Our grander thing. That's a fact. Did you ever get to to meet Bjork? I didn't, and I'm scared. I'm so scared. I almost choked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I'm so scared to meet her. Yeah. Same thing with Lauren Hill. It was just like wild. But she wait, just, you didn't meet her either because you were scared. Well, I tried to avoid her, and then she ran wow. into me in the hallway <laughs> in the kitchen, backstage, and this other thing. And I was like, ah, and it was so wrong, Lord. I'm gonna do it again and it's better eventually. It was, it was yeah. just so wrong. But the Bjork shit was like. When I was younger, like I've cried to Bjork so much. State of emergency has brought me to tears like so many times. I've yeah. cried and danced. 
while crying and done wow. all the movements I feel like to Bjork and I just watching come to me her unplugged and yeah. the whole like that was her first I that inspired me so much when I when I saw her unplugged because it was right when she was out the gate that she had this entire presence but fucking, not the costume not just, and everything else but not just her she had her entire orchestra with her yes from the first unplugged and they're like going crazy and One I was like that's how you fucking glasses. do it yeah yeah like it is so beautiful it was in like you just in a denim skirt and a white beater giving hell yeah. like and it's so mm -hmm. crazy and mm -hmm. that's when i realized like you just so big you so big and just magnanimous like right. you don't it's not the clothes it's not the art direction it's not it's really coming it's out really of here yeah. energy genuine. whatever is channeling through you is fucked and i will hear her rip apart people in like her dissection of like music and she's right, like and it's life, boring right. yeah, it's yeah. Wrong. it's fucked up yeah and then like every time i fly on a plane i think about how she would talk about like her molecules and why she takes the train only and, like right, what it does right. also the shit and i just feel like when she spoke about me it was too surreal. She was like, yeah, I was riding my bike listening to SZA in Brooklyn, and I was just like, that was weird and what? strange. Yeah. And I didn't even, I couldn't acknowledge it. I just wanted to burst into tears, tears. for all the times that I thought of, like, what she's done for me. Yeah. And put me on, like, for real. She really put me on to, like, no choice and energy and, like, that freeness of sound and, like, uh, like that weird tribal invocation that she be doing. I don't yeah, even know. Yeah. But she's really on one. And then she emailed me about my voice. I didn't even know what the fuck to say to her. I'm like that with people who I'm really, really, really. Like, uh, I be saying weird shit to make Beyonce stop talking to me too. Right, but, right. And anybody, Frank. I just be yeah. just like ruining it. I'm like, I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go. And, or I just ramble or do too much. It's just like, yeah. People are crazy. <laughs> That's fine. Kind people make me feel weird. Last night when I met Brockhampton for the first time, yeah. and it was like Jack Antonoff, Brockhampton, and Justin Timberlake like all in this room together, and I had just met like everybody for the first time. Right, right, right. And I just had to say it like, like out loud. I was like, "Listen, I'm normally not like this, but this yeah. is Justin Timberlake and Brockhampton and music, and like a lot of things are happening right now, and I'm really yeah. overwhelmed, and I'm sorry." Yeah, this whole entire energy. I just had to say it. I'm like, "This is yeah. a lot right now," but I'm so crazy. Going. It was fine, and yeah. I think it really made me feel like better, and everyone else felt better too. Cause they were like, "Oh, she's not a bitch. She just can't process this process moment." Process this, yeah. And she just like can't get. But her it's also like on. a cool third wall moment to just say it. It it's was like the first a, time I've ever just said yeah. that. I think I might start doing that like more often because I think a lot of people or a lot of things are like perceived because like, oh, I don't respond or like, mm -hmm. if I'm scared to know how many people would say I don't respond. Yeah, but yeah. But it's really yeah. because I don't be knowing what to say, and I'm very nervous like all the time. Yeah. And because. I be wanting to talk so much, like I, like we fuck around just be like best friends because I just want to talk to you all the time. It's yeah. like more, 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 more. And if you don't want to talk every day, then it's just like now I feel weird. Now I feel like, weird, yeah. And I'm so extra and clingy, That's funny. so then I just don't talk to anyone and I don't respond at all. Yeah. So then I don't have to like. Damn. So you just don't deal with it, but that's like not the right answer. Because then people think like what's wrong with her. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of um, <laughs> I'm like that with uh with Jeremy Scott. Right, I, like, I would be like that with Jeremy Scott yeah. also. And he like literally just like messages me and I'm just like... <laughs> Rihanna, just same, like, I'm the same with Rihanna. Know. Yeah, yeah. Or anybody, no. honestly, yeah. literally everybody, like Sid, Not anybody. No, it's literally everybody. You know? It could be Sid, like anybody, Steve, anybody. Sorry, my mom. If it's overwhelming and too empowering, I'm just like... <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> Is it... Is it ever weird talking to like people who you knew when you were younger now? No, I love talking to people from when I was younger. I'm actually like- How do you deal with it? Just the anxiety. Nostalgia. You wanna come back up? Come on. The anxiety of it. Um, Some people say like, for me, it's like weird sometimes, but it's almost like the energy that that's represented when you become like a, a thing long. or like people know you. It's just like they give you this energy of like, you know what I mean? <laughs> And say the most obvious like keywords and you're just like cringing, but you're you know what I mean? What do you mean? Like on some like or maybe they just assume that I'm just super different. I think more thing more than anything, people assume that I'm a lot more different than I really am. Yeah, but nothing changes. It's, nothing. But your energy it's your energy more changes towards the people you 
cared about because it's like it's like the now this energy weird, changes around yeah, you yeah exactly. while you remain the same and everything yeah. happens so fast yeah and in a vacuum so people assume like there's no way that you can't be any different like, yeah no. and if you are acting like that then you're capping but it's like yeah. it's not that it's just that like i've really just been if you think about it like most people are isolated with the same people that like around every day yeah like, i'm around sage and amber yeah. every day yeah for the last, just like I was hanging around with my friends every day before, so mm -hmm. it's like. It's no different. If anything, I'm interacting less with people, so it's like, y'all are probably changing more than I am. Yeah. Like on some, on that scale of like, of attitude and interaction. <clears throat> yeah. And then, or you're experiencing all this stuff, and if anything, I'm breaking all these walls on myself of like, I gotta perform live on TV for the first time, I'm scared. Right, I gotta right. perform this new song on TV again, and no one's ever heard it before, and I'm scared. I gotta do this, this and, that. and I'm scared. This is what I'm going through every single time. Yeah. And everyone else is like, that bitch on SNL, like, sh that's why she's not texting me back. Oh but really, I'm just like, I'm processing the fact that, like, I was just on live TV and I'm scared. Yeah, yeah. And I'm but literally. Also, everything else. I'm right. Like, and, and, and I'm. And I'm just, I'm thinking about how to get better, how to like, like, what does it mean? What am I not focusing on? Like, right. trying to figure out how to like, not make it mean too much yeah, for me, yeah. but make it mean enough to like, push me to be my best self. Like, right. it's so many reasons and things going on, but it's not like, it's not what you think. It's yeah. not like, I'm so famous and so rich and busy, I just yeah. can't fathom to, Fix my thumbs to yeah, say what up. To say what like, up. Yeah. That shit is not. But it's also it's, it's like it, you say what up, you guys talk, and then what? You like you meet up. I don't know. Yes. And then what? But I'm a link up ass bitch like, though. Huh? I'm a link up ass bitch. I'm not. I know. So I it, tell. I'm just like it's like what? I tried to talk to you on the phone for like an hour once, and you were. That's true. I was. I'm I mean, so sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> it's why I don't respond to you now because I'm like, Kerwin, if you don't want to be my best friend, get the fuck out. No. Period. And that's how I am with everyone. Oh, <laughs> All right, so one thing I do want to talk about is fashion shit. You be going crazy with the fashions. I saw you at the Met Gala. What's going on <laughs> with that? Fashions. Yo, one time, I'm sorry, the S on fashions is funny as fuck. Um, I put the S on it because it's multiple. It's not an addition, it's multiple. Oh, a woman of many looks. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, Talk to me about that. It's just like, but even before, before those events, you was always kind of, you was into it. Like, you was always really into fat. People wouldn't really know that, but like, people know that. Like. Nah, it's like, nah, I really, um, I'm really into style mm -hmm. and just like personal expressions. I think it's so interesting to see everybody's individuals. I don't like just like A style, but I feel like, like my mom, she's the first person to put me on like Oscar de la Renta and like all this right. vintage shit, but then yeah. also makes it with thrift shit. Mm -hmm. And like also makes it with like her jewelry that she got from Africa, yeah, like when yeah. she was living there, like just random. She told a story with everything that she had on. Yeah. That's why she never shared with me. Yeah. Cause I would fuck it up and I didn't care about nice things. Right, right, but right. I also learned a lot about <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's at. <laughs> um, she said I was saying yeah and write too much. Oh, that's just how I communicate. People say people say I'm I say like, yeah, uh, too much. Right. I don't know. It's, I like yeah. Yeah, right. I ain't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, you weren't talking too much. I just basically, I don't know. Fashion was definitely something I just naturally fall into right. and then like making shit makes mm -hmm. sense to me all right. the time and then but I don't like to take it too seriously it's like Met Gala was fun but it was fun because I could just like put on a costume and like dip mm. and I could pick and then Oscars I could just like design a dress from scratch with like pick the fabric pick this but it's like I'm playing it's like That's to me true. it's like I'm just putting on a costume I want to look like a random Southern debutante with like a poof out dress. I had yeah. a feather, but I left it at home. Mm. But the feather, it's just, I just love to play a costume. We're not even a just the energy. Like now I pick shit based on like blue is a very communicative color. It's throat chakra. Right, this right. is a cool blue to wear while we're talking. I feel like, I don't know, a contrast to orange, which is creative. Like, yeah. so, I mean, sacral chakra. So you're just like, I don't know. It's always a vibe. Yesterday I had on this weird like skate wig and that was fun. And we went to the beach. Wait, what happened to the um, the OG wig though? Which one? You know which one. It's the OG one. It's a, the curly one. Or was the it the afro? big poof? Was that the control? The control with the bangs. 
I had the poof in the back. What happened? What's the poof in the back? Half it's... up, half down. Oh, half up, half down? Yeah, where is it? In the back. Is it like in a display? Hold on. You have to cut the camera because I have to adjust this. It's alright, it's alright. Okay, I'm we'll back. edit it out. <laughs> um, where is it? That's in my bathroom. Okay. I could bring it out. It's around. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely, I think I was hiding behind hair hella too, though. Yeah. Because also, when I first, first started, and I wasn't, I wasn't off the wigs and shit yet, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to, like, I was so prideful and for the wrong reasons, and it cost me a lot. Like Wait, what I, do you mean? Like, I was just like, I don't want to wear a wig. Like, I'm too good to wear a wig. Right, like, right. I'm going to just, like, have my natural hair, or I'm going to just take care of my hair. I'm going to just do my little tutorial. My hair fell out real fast. Oh, damn. From all the manipulation of, like, doing shit. And then I dyed my natural hair orange. Mm. And then I took it to a level 10 blonde. Like, I was a white girl. Like, I, that shit was going to not fall out. And wow. then all of it just came right out. And then I was like, damn, I guess I'm wig gang. And then I got into wigging and I just didn't know what it meant for me. And I'm just like, I just, so we're just, I just did anything. I'm just yeah. like, let's just start going like extra thick, big, large. And I just, I don't know. It just became like a fun, but I've always been like that with my hair. Like right. just like whatever I feel like, like I made this in the kitchen sink. This is my first time doing watercolor. Damn. It's pretty fun. You just yeah, like, it looks good. thanks. It's so fun. We should do a watercolor wig for you. That's true. I'm down. I think blue would look fire. Blue? In complexion. Mm -hmm. With the pencil. Would it be the dreads? No, right? Um, wow. I could do dread extensions. That's it. To on your dreads and then we'll pick the color on the ends. I'm down. Okay. That's fire. What else do you want to know about me? Are you tasting the question? Yeah. I feel that. <laughs> when it comes to songwriting, how do you come? How'd you come up with that cadence? Because that's, that's one of the most amazing. Oh, I have to play my new music in your earphones. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> but I mean, even just on, on control, just some, the way you switch it up, and sometimes you're rapping but singing, and it's kind of like it's so unique. Thank you. And special. Thank you. I don't know. I think um, I have a short attention span. I have ADHD, and I think same. I'm easily bored as fuck with myself. Right. Mm. And I think for a long time when I made music before, I wasn't making music to entertain myself. I was just making music because it was like what I heard. Right, right. And then now I was like, if something clicked in my head, oh, I remember. I, my boyfriend at the time, his boss, yeah. was being a dick. And I went to his job to go like talk to his boss. I don't know why I felt like I could do that. Right. But I was just like, let me talk to him and feel like, ask him what his problem is. And he was like, you're like the singer girl, right? Like. You do that thing, like let's let's hear it, let's hear, let's hear it. And I had to pull up the song. I'm like, and I don't listen to my own music. I've never listened to my own music. So even back when it was just Babylon, like some um, old song, I'm like I pulled it up and I had to listen to it myself. And I was yeah. like, and I tried to turn the volume up mad high. And I'm like, what's going on? And it's still mad low. Like I was so bored and I was like whispering. I was like, this is crazy. And I didn't know that I sounded like that until I was like, mind you, I had just came off my first tour with Janae and my first time performing with a live band and thinking, like shit being loud and singing full voice. Right, and now right. I'm like in this quiet ass room <laughs> trying to boss up on this man yeah. with my whisper tunes. And it just didn't mm. crack off for me the right. way that I needed it to. Right, right. Weird moment, but game changing for yeah. me. It really made me feel like, and then same way on stage, I didn't feel the same. In the studio, I felt like this different thing. And on stage, I felt like, a warrior, some, yeah. whole, some another thing. Like I felt this surge of energy of like aggression. Comes when you're on the stage. Yeah, and then my music didn't match my energy, and then I just had to make shit the way I felt in that moment for real. And so I started to stop being. I don't know. I wasn't afraid. I wasn't hiding behind reverb and yeah. falsetto and yeah. thirty-five stacks of background. Yeah. Like I was just. You know, or obscurity. Like I was just saying straight up, like clarity, crisp. I had to deal with myself and um, you gotta dare to suck. And that's funny, Justin said that the other day. And it's real, I had to dare to suck. I had to look at myself and be like, I'm not happy with this sound. Right, right, right. This isn't me. Yeah. What is the better version of me? And you know, it was fucked up because you don't reach the best version of you right away. And I'm still not the best version of me, but like, you're definitely leaning towards it. Towards the every final time. form, yeah, every Correct. time. Correct. 
So this next album is like even more of me being afraid of like, being less afraid of who am I when I have no choice. Damn. Like when I'm not trying to curate myself and contain, but like, if I train myself to have a great foundation, it was like if I rehearse and yeah. do my vocal warm ups yeah. and study my songs and songwrite every day, then my natural baseline, even when I'm unabashed and, and not thinking, will be greater yeah. than who I was. It has to be. And it needs to be. When's it coming? Soon as fuck. I think I'm about to just start dropping Lucy's. You said what? I then just start dropping Lucy's. You're just gonna start dropping them? Yeah. Period. That was something I was gonna ask you. It was just like, yeah, yeah. how often do you just like. Yeah. Because now dropping music is so different. It's just I like, know. Here you go. It changed so fast, really. And you can just do anything. And I feel yeah. like. I don't feel any pressure right now. The only pressure I feel is like to make a cohesive, like to not a cohesive, but put like a album TM together. Like yeah. everything I'm making is so beautiful and it's happening so. Simply, like, easily, like, without effort. Yeah. Uh, my shit. I feel like features are so different, and they're so difficult because I have to fit somebody else's, like... Right, right. Like, fantasy. Hate and style. Yeah. It can't just be that But maybe that's song. another fourth wall that I just have to break, too, where it's like, now right. you just gotta do your shit 100% right, on the right. feature. But I'm not... I'm just learning again to, like... I haven't really done that many features, so I'm yeah, still trying to yeah. figure out, like, how I just, like, get off my own porch of, like, like, what do you want? You know what mm. I mean? And then, but when I get back into the studio with my shit, I feel like I could just say. It's your world. You could say anything and, and say it, how you want. And it's, it's coming out like, so beautiful. It yeah. makes me feel like I did the groundwork for real. Like to, yeah. to I don't know. It, it's not going to take four years to figure out how to write. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't need to figure that out anymore. I'm, well, no, nah, it's just like, gonna, thank you for saying that. I just yeah. had styles that I loved yeah. and I wanted to work with like writers who I like people who I love and grew up with listening to and I just couldn't do that. Yeah. I didn't have the access. So I just feel like I had to excite myself in another way. That's fire. When I look at like just great musicians, I'm just like it's like can anyone remake it and it'll sound the same and it's like with you it's like that doesn't fit in and for me that was like something that I liked about Bjork a lot too. It's like yeah. even though she's like giving you the entire mood board for like over the past 20 years, like yeah. no one can recreate it. It's not like quite no matter the what. Same. Bjork, Kate Bush. The same way, like John Mayer makes a perfect, like, white alternative music. Like, Period. The ne it's just like wholesome, sweet. No one like, has the tone of voice no one. that no. makes you feel like you should be really, like, laying in the grass with a white comforter. Yeah, or looking at, like, a landscape. I mean, like, holy shit, that's a good view. With, like, a cheese plate. That's mm -hmm. the energy. No, I fuck with John Mayer. I met him like only twice and I was short on words because I was like, wow. Damn. I... <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge John Mayer fan. I know. Yeah. Me too, sorry. That's all right. How'd you get uh, Drew Barrymore in the in the video? Child. What's the story? Yo, another thing was why I think writing things down really be helping. Mm -hmm. It manifests shit, even if it does. I wrote this long ass letter in my notes yeah. and told my manager to send it to her and he never sent it. Right, classic manager shit. Yeah, and then she said yes on her own mm. without knowing anything. She just heard the song existed. Mm -hmm. and wow. Down, and she showed up and I was like, she must have fucked with my letter and he was like, I never sent it. <laughs> and I was like, which made it even cooler though. Cause yeah. I was like, wow. And she just like- It was just genuine and nonchalant happened on its own. Yeah, she just on set drinking Modelo talking to me about her life. Wow. And I was like, I love you so much. I was just smoking a blunt, just hanging on her everywhere. Wow. It was fucked up. Damn. She's like that too. Like, she's really like that. She's a beautiful human. Like, yeah. I just love Drew Barrymore. Damn. I love everything about her teeth, her voice, her mouth, her face, her eyes, like, her tone of voice. Right. Everything. She's just so beautiful. Even with your videos, like they're so like just well shot, directed. It's like Thank the vision of what you that. want. It it takes being that person when you're like you're like a genuinely nice person. Thanks. 
But, you know, being nice isn't just always saying yes. It's like being genuine about your vision. And it's like people, that should never clash. I feel like people clash that too much. It's like, that's what I struggle with. Yeah, professionally, when you have like how something wants to come out, how your art is going to be presented to the world, that's like, no one can take that away from you or tell you you're overreacting. With I like, struggle with that hella yeah. with control. Like, um, I was told to have Supermodel be like towards the end, like in the middle, like wow. the album cut at the end. And I just really wanted to start my album with that. Yeah. And I had a really crazy follow with my manager over that shit. And he like didn't talk to me. And he had Kendrick sit me down and explain to me why he thinks it should be an album cut. And I was just like, I really appreciate this. And I just don't agree. And I put it at the, the side. energy when you start with rough. Supermodel. It's like, and I, just, I was fucking your friends when you were in Vegas. Like the whole, like, just it comes in so hard. It sounds so bad. Huh? That sounds so bad to say. I was fucking your friends. I was fucking your friends when That's you were in how Vegas. We're starting the album. You shouldn't have. You should have been listening. It hurt me more to do something contrary. <laughs> Law. <laughs> it hurt me more to do something contrary to what they wanted. Yeah. It really hurts me more to do something other than what people want than to do something I believe in. I think just now. Yeah. Even right now, I was just asked to do something. I'll tell you what it was after this, but like. And I really love the person that asked me to do it. And I normally say yes to this person just because I just love them so much. Yeah. And, and I wanted to just keep making music because I'm loving what I'm making right now and I'm in a good zone. Right, and right. if I stopped to do the same for this other person, it could take two and a half weeks yeah. just to prepare, to be like ready to do this thing. And I would just normally say, yeah, of course. Yeah, right. And this one time, it was like the first time I was just like, no. And they asked me six times. Wow. And I normally would, by like the fifth time, would be like, yes, for sure. Wow. And this time I was just like, no. No. And I never did that before, and I don't feel bad. That's because good. I really believe if it doesn't feel good, it doesn't in feel what I'm making right yeah. now. And it, not because I don't want to do it for them. And I realized it had nothing to do with like, <laughs> it had nothing to do with like me not being a nice person. It's just like, I just believe in myself, and it's yeah. okay. And yeah. I'm allowed to believe in myself. Like we this, all are. If this burns the ridge, it's like you never really fucked with me. Long. Also, it's that like, it, they would never do that. Yeah. It's really just my personal. I don't know who it is. I'm just saying up. in general. It, I, no, no. Yeah, I feel like it's personal. Because I, I, I get asked to do shit all the time, and I'm just like, no. Like I'm absolutely. And people be like, not fucking with you off that. No, but you could tell that. You can, uh, well, I'm just very kind of cutthroat when I meet people. Like, I know someone within the first, like, two minutes or 30 seconds of talking to them. So I can What's know. What's your sign? Huh? Leah? Oh, that's what? apparent. What's your rising sign? Uh, I don't know. You know what time you were born? No, I have no idea. Damn. I've had, like, two baby photos. Damn. I don't know anything about my childhood. Okay. <laughs> You like embody child, the inner child, really, really well, though. Thank and you God. also look like a baby, like in the face. It's mm -hmm. so funny, like an actual baby. And I also have a baby. Yes, which yeah. must be comforting for your baby to look in your face and also see another baby. Yeah, that's nice. It's pure. Yeah, that's true. You're so pure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you? Well, um. What's the mode you get in when you're like working on an album? Like, what's your album? Or like, do you have um, to like completely this type of shit? Switching wigs every day. Mm -hmm. I start like like very. I get very like switching wigs every other day. Yeah. Like in another mode because I become a character. Yeah. Like when I'm, or just like whatever vibe. But like it's very like internalized experiences. I can't explain it. Yeah, I, I didn't know what that meant. Like. It's like you literally put on another wig. Yesterday I had on a different wig. And okay. then the day before that I had on my Afro wig. And yeah. the day before that I had on my pink wig. Okay. But I, it, and this is just for being in the house? No, I'm in the studio. And oh. I'm going around. I'm doing, but it's like, right. it's more so I'm just like, I'm just moving right, through, the, right. through the like the These different notions and personalities. Yeah, and, I'm like yeah. learning myself right. in different aspects and like different moments of freedom, like different levels of freedom. Yeah, and I think it's just happening like more and more. And sometimes I'll just be on my like, damn, like I don't want to do anything. Like I just I locked my hair, did a little like dreads, and went to Hawaii and like stopped wearing makeup for like two yeah, weeks. It all has different like different connotations. I don't know. It's just like, 
Album mode is all about getting to the truth. It's about crying and yeah. accepting that you don't have no words and that some of the words that you may have may be corny as fuck. Yeah. Then it, then saying them anyway, then scrapping them and coming up with better words and like accepting that you may not arrive at your better word right now. And you will have to go to bed irritated that you don't have a better phrase. Yeah. But tomorrow you'll be more excited to wake up and try again. Yeah. But that going to bed without putting a bow on something yeah. is so frustrating and that's what puts you in tunnel vision. So Man, you don't you, sleep and now you're just going you're crazy. You're lost in the vacuum. Do you, does it get... Because you're chasing this this energy thing and yeah. you're just off of whatever, like daylight, nightlight. Do you Girl. feel any pressure on it being sophomore, sophomore time? No, I was like dancing around that in my brain. I was like, do yeah. I care? And in my brain, I was like, everyone I fuck with and respect Never had an issue on sophomore yeah. album. Like people who make real music, no bullshit. Never had struggles with a sophomore album. Frank. Right, right. I asked about Justin Timberlake too, and I was like, "How do you?" I was like, "Do you ever feel like that?" He was like, "And I think he said his sophomore album was like fucking. It wasn't. They were both huge. Yeah. It wasn't future. Was it Future Sucks Love Sounds? Was that I the sophomore? It, well, both of those artists take ten years to release an album. One. Yeah. There's no way Justin's first album was crazy because it was. His, like, I feel like that was his, like... Separation from insane. That, yeah, that was, like, his Bieber moment when he made, uh... uh his, Bieber was never in a group. Huh? Bieber was never in a group. Yeah, but he had a transition from being, you know... A kid to, A like, child pop star to, like, fine having, like, no sense with Travis, which right. is, like, this whole other vibe. Yeah. But that's kind of, like, what JT's first album reminded me of. Yeah. like And having all these Pharrell beats and... But there was a huge gap in between two of them. They both didn't have problems. I, I, that's hard to believe. The, the, but, and then it's like everyone who I listen to, like Stevie Wonder yeah. or Beyonce, like no one who I fuck with, I can't even think of who struggled with the sophomore album. Bjork did. Did she? When she made posts, and that's why it sounds so different from the first album. And after that, every single album sounds different from the last one, if you notice. Huh. And then to the point where like her albums now are just sounds. Yeah. Like, but like the second one sounds nothing like the first one. I really, it's like it's hard. It's like because people set these not. weird expectations. Like. It's like I feel like it's it's not. I rebuke that. I rebuke mm, okay. the idea that that is hard because it's just not true. I feel like it's like it is a little bit to dance in your brain about yeah. like do, what do people want from me, and then you just gotta make shit that feel good and just yeah. trust that yeah. this is what you're supposed to and be what doing. what you trust. But just because you know what sounds good. Yeah. It's like when I I know I could listen to the Cali record and know that that's not me a hundred percent. Like all the way, I, I could listen to the, to the. Wait, wait, why does he? Why do you say that? Because it's not me. I could listen to the Cardi record and know that it's not me. Yeah. And but or I could listen to, the song that I just did with Post Malone and then be like, that's me a little more. Mm. Or the song that I just did with Justin and be like, that's big me. Mm. And like, or like, and just know that I and other people will recognize that right, that's me. Right, right, right. But like. I just feel like your brain and body just, and it's not to say that those are bad songs, it's just that my body doesn't recognize it. Yeah, it doesn't and recognize that you knew what the other person wanted and you're just like. Or, or anything, yeah. like it just doesn't recognize it. Right, right, right. It, the, that version of myself on that song my, is unfamiliar to my mm. spirit. And I feel like when I look at myself or me on that Maroon 5 song, my body doesn't know that song either. I love that because song. I love Maroon 5 so fucking much. No, and I love that song. you did with them. No, I love that song and, and I love them, which is why I said it, but yeah. my body didn't recognize that yeah. energy. So like, but when I make my own music, I won't stop until I recognize it. Mm. And that's how I know it's never gonna be fucked up. Do you recognize that, the Maroon 5 song now? Um, I just like the song. It's a good song. Right. I that was like one of the first big songs in my, my relationship with my wife. Oh. We were always playing that in the house. Cleaning the house. I know the song. Y'all are so Pierre. That's true. Have some room it's five. a classic. You can say that about the DJ Khaled track, but no. the Maroon Five song. Is no, just... thank you. No, I'm not even. I um, I love that DJ Khaled being all that shit. It's not even that. It's not, I can't. I can't explain. I'm just being honest in terms of what feels like me. What's fully you, and if it's fully being delivered in the future, and it's like. Or if I can fully do it, because if my mm. spirit doesn't recognize it, then I can't. You can't fake it. You can't the, fake the funk. In the studio. Mm -mm. I just cannot. Or even when I listen to Consideration, I wrote yeah. that song. It does not feel familiar to me at all when I hear her sing it. Really? Mm -mm. I don't know that song. I didn't know you had any affiliation <laughs> when I heard it for the first time. Mm -hmm. 
And I immediately was like, oh my God. Yeah, no. Stealing flows. I'm screaming goodnight. The song just. I'm going to play you the original though, just to like, between me and you. Okay, take okay, it here. Right. I might put it on this next project, just because okay. the energy is very different. Damn, okay. Not that it's just because um, I sing it like I'm from Jersey. Right, right, and, right. And it sounds like that. Damn, that's but, um, But no, it's just familiar. I I don't know if cognitive dissonance age is the right phrase mm. with like my the music. Yeah. Hit him. That's how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Cognitive dissonance. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. I never, yeah. I never acknowledge any of that shit. It's Damn. Weird. I had to listen to super, like when I listen to my music at home or like in the car in the earphones, that's when I'm like, I started crying when I was listening to Supermodel and I was sad because I was like, I'm sad as fuck. Yeah, yeah. The song feels sad. All yeah. my music feels so sad to me, but I also just like, I don't know. I was sometimes I listen to my music and I'd be like, what's wrong with me? I'm like, or why are you so sad? That's probably why I don't listen to my music either, because it mm -hmm. makes me like ultra introspective without. It's kind of triggered. It's not solution oriented. Right, right. It's just like trigger oriented. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like, this is happening. I'm good on that. Yeah. Frank does that to me too, but I love to do it. I'm like, Damn. take me to the brink of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please <laughs> depress me, Poppy. All of that was a vibe. Damn. You were um, you went to college to be a, a marine biologist, right? I went to college to be five things. Oh. So first, it was mass comm because I wanted to do broadcast journalism. What's up? What oh are wait, you doing broadcast right journalism. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, no. And then um, science and biology. Yeah. And then uh, my political science or management. Mm -hmm. And then I failed at all of it. I'm I failed sorry. at everything. Don't be sorry. Did you say you're sorry? Huh? You didn't say you were sorry. <coughs> Bless you. I don't know what I said. Okay. Don't be sorry. If, no, I'm not, um, I'm not sorry. Okay, because school, <laughs> I don't feel bad for failing out on the internet. That shit was very hard. Yeah. And I feel like I was doing it again to prove to other people that I wasn't dumb. Yeah. Like, I would go get A's and B's and then be like, look at this. I'm not dumb. And then just not go to class. And I fail out and waste my parents' money and it's just like a whole bunch of bullshit. Right, right. But in the end of the day, and I also realized, like, I don't have to do any of that shit to learn anything. It's so crazy. Like, yeah, you yeah. don't. I could totally just do a whole fucking, like, internship in Madagascar with, like, local people there and, like, right. scientists. Like, yeah. or just DM Paul Nicklin and be like, yo, you're one of my favorite wildlife photographers. I would love to come intern with you and just shut the fuck up and be quiet, like, yeah, in the yeah. tundra. Right, right. Like, in the Arctic for 10 months, like, yeah. whatever. And then now, like, but if I want to do the work and be certified, to work with orca whales and like yeah. then I'm gonna do that I don't gotta go to fucking you know Johns Hopkins or fucking to do some shit with brain surgery or yeah, Cornell right. to do some shit with science or any of that shit right, I could just right. like, it's talk. exactly or fucking what's that shit called DeVry DeVry big DeVry, DeVry. yeah big <laughs> that's that like Ivy League energy yeah um right. no but it's true or MIT or like any of that yeah. I know a lot of really crazy tech folk who are just off the chain yeah. on their own. Or even you building that damn portable Nintendo. Oh, the Nintendo 64? Like so cool. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. It took me a long time to build that. Did it really? Yeah. Did it, I thought you were capping on how long it took you. You thought I was capping? How, about how long it took you? 18 years. Did it really? No, but um, <laughs> okay. when I was six, um, my mom had got me the, the Pikachu Nintendo 64. Mm -hmm. I was so excited, and um, I heard my cousin was coming over, and he has the same one, mm -hmm. so I was so excited. I was like, oh, fuck. I get to play his games. He had the South Park game. He had he had a couple other games. I was like, damn. I South Park so much. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, so he came over, and um, we played for it for a long time, and then when he left, I noticed my Nintendo 64 wasn't working. Mm. Um, so then I looked at it, and then I turned it over, and his name was on it. So he stole my Nintendo 64. Oh my god. So <laughs> it, it stuck with me for the longest time. And, it's, and you just had to get your shit right. I had to make my own Nintendo 64, you know? Yeah. Fuck them. I feel that. So. That's the stage I'm in right now. Yeah. I spent my whole like life being like, can you help me? Can you please? Why don't I have? How come this don't look like that? Where yeah. my budget at? How come I ain't got no machine? How come I'm not signed to a major label? How do yeah. I? And it's really just like, I have to make my own Nintendo 64 because y'all niggas is playing. Mm. I don't want to wait for you to bring my shit back. They're playing the Switch. I don't know what you're doing. What does that mean? The Nintendo Switch. Okay. You know? That's different. 
That's a because they're switching up. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, playing the one that was left to you, the broken one, or mm -hmm. the one that's. <laughs> so I funny. don't even know. It's gone in so many directions. Poetry. <laughs> I'm stressful. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just know uh, I'm off of waiting to be helped. Do you know what you want to call the album yet? No, I do. Have, I had this concept where I was like, I'm just talking. Mm -hmm. I wanted to call my project, I'm just talking. I'm just oh, oh I, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> because it was a whole bunch of different sounds that didn't go together. Yeah. And... It's a lot of like, it's almost rap rhetoric, but it's right. like, it's singing, but it's like, it's just feelings. Damn. I'm just talking. And you're gonna play all of it for me when we stop recording. I'm gonna play some. Aww. All of it. I'm gonna play you a couple things. All the songs. <laughs> I'll play you. <laughs> you. I'll play you. You Leo. Oh my God. My dad's a Leo. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Your dad used to, um, he used to work on South Park in Spanish, right? Yeah, CNN. That was. And Time Warner. Oh, okay. It was wild. Mm. It was, I used to go over there all the time, up to that building, on, and on at Columbus Circle. Mm -hmm. On Time Warner, that's where the CNN was. Damn, that's pretty cool. Yeah, my whole life. It's so funny. I didn't give a fuck about that when I was younger, and I was up there all the time. And yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, wait. <laughs> but I definitely, it was so cool. My dad was just in his little like room, like just editing everything. And I learned how to do all that shit. Like, just see it. And, See the process of that? Yeah, it's like Final Cut Pro and all that shit was not foreign to me by the time I got there. It was so casual because my dad yeah. was there all the time. But now it's like a big deal. I'm so grateful. I hated going over there because it was so boring. Yeah, but I'm right, so glad right. I went over there. It's pretty fire. <laughs> it's What's boring. something that you would want to do outside of music that you want to do and haven't gotten the time or the chance to do? Um... I just thought of everything I wanted to do at once, and I was like, oh, where sure. do I start? I want to get my clothing shit off. Not even my clothing, just my design shit. Yeah. So many... You want to give it like the right focus? Eh, no, because it doesn't require a shit ton of focus on me. It's really mm -hmm. easy. And yeah. Like it's like natural kind of thing, and it feels good. But I want to be able to do it well, so in that regard. And then I would love to maybe do some entomology, like some categorizing of plants and like animal species and mm -hmm. shit in like a really cool biosphere because there's not many left and the world is dying. So that would be very, very tight just to like really be a part of that because it's like really some Book of Eli shit right now right. where you're like taking the last of the last and like tucking it into the thing, right, right. into the vault. And then I would love to master some more like gymnastic skills. I want to do a full before the summer's over, like a something really crazy on the trampoline so I could do it off of like a bridge. My first time I like did a tumble off a bridge like two weeks ago and I was really scared. Yeah. And I did it though. Um, I don't know. I want to just really get my spirit together. Outside of music, I just want to like borderline become a bodybuilder, find peace of mind and Learn more. But I love music more than I ever have right now. That's fair. Yeah. Before music was such like a point of anger. It was like this thing that I wasn't exceptional at and I couldn't enjoy it because I wasn't exceptional. And now mm. music is this thing that's leading me towards the path of my best self. Right. Because you're more in touch with that now and you know more what you want? Or? I know that it's about the process. And nothing else I believe that about. Yeah. Everyone's like, life is about, I never want to hear that shit. Because yeah, that shit yeah. is hurtful and like makes me feel like it's pointless and yeah. like not fun. But when you do music and you really do be like, oh, it makes the only thing that makes you feel like it's worth it. But maybe you feel like that about some shit that makes you feel like shit is worth it. Right, right. What makes you feel like that? Film? What What makes me feel like that? Shit is worth it. Um, it depends. Sometimes I have like days where I'm just like, wow, everything sucks right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's like whether you turn on the news or like, whether you see- How does the news make you feel right now? I just like, I really, it's crazy because I talked to my wife about this and it's almost like, uh, you either, it's almost either like ignorance is bliss mm -hmm. and like you play like Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber real mm -hmm. quick mm -hmm. and like don't acknowledge it. But right. then it's like, if you do, I'm someone who like, if I'm into something, I'm like passionately like, into it same like um me and my wife have been together for i think almost three years now we've only spent four days apart fire 
Um, but like just anything I'm into, I'm just fully really into. So it's just like I always like anything I'll read and I'm just like, fuck, like it's just it's so crazy right now. Yeah. But then at, at the same time, when I look at like what's the hottest thing right now or like I also I'm just like, why is this the thing? Like, mm -hmm. I don't. And I always try to get away from those thoughts and just stay positive. And then, yeah. like, sometimes I'll be inspired by by films or or or, or shows. Like, uh, um, my friend Lionel, I like called him, like telling him, like, yeah, I'm freaking out. Like, everything sucks. Like, yeah. what am I doing anything for? Yeah. And he told me to watch his show uh, called I Think You Should Leave on Netflix. <laughs> and then I'm I saw it. That. And it, huh? I like that name. Yeah, it's a good show. It immediately made me happy again. Because it's like a, it's like the sketch comedy show, but it reminded me of like the ones that I liked in the nineties, like the state. But it was just a good show. I was like, wow, there's good art that exists right now. Yeah. Okay, I feel better, yeah. and I was able to move on. So, but a lot of times it is music. I think like even sometimes if I get in a fight with my wife, I like, I like, I appreciate that time um, because then I could listen to sad songs and like really feel them for a second. And have a breakthrough through, through that, whether it's like Fleet Foxes or whatever, yeah. and you're just like listening to it in here. So I don't know. Um, I like your taste in music. Thank you. It's interesting. The more Thanks. you say, I'm just like, huh. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think we're probably on the same frequency. Like, when it's like this lady had told me once, this Israeli woman told me I was gonna run into people, the same people, yeah. for the rest of my life. Right, right. We're gonna attract the same, it doesn't matter, it'll be a different version. She's like, you'll meet me again somewhere wow. else. Yeah. And just like I feel like you are an iteration of another frequency, like another. Yeah. But we will always meet each other yeah, again, over yeah. and over again. Or yeah. the, like the fact that you, or that that God allowed me to hear that you fuck with that jazz and some of the songs since you walked in, because yeah, it really right. took me to a strange place in my brain. Like, huh? Because I like you a lot. Because obviously I try to talk to you on the phone forever. But I'm just I just like you. I liked you when I first met you with Luca. Because you weren't on no bullshit. You were just like, hi, I'm Kerwin, hey. Yeah. And I'm really like, I'm really like, nah. <laughs> and so it made me feel good to know that someone else was like that. But then to like listen to the frequency of music that you fuck with, I'm like, damn, this really is that energetic frequency that will always find each other. And I'm going to see Kerwin again in many forms. It was just yeah. very comforting and cool. Thank you. Cool. Nice. There's definitely more, more excitement than hey. I was like. Scissor. No, what? <laughs> I was like that with you. I knew exactly who you were. Do you not remember? I, I was very I was like, geeked. Huh? No, your energy is so like it makes me happy. Thank you. Yeah, your uniqueness. <laughs> Especially the belly touch. <laughs> I would love to see your aura photograph. You ever been in Chinese uh, magic jewelry in what? Chinatown? You ever been in magic jewelry in Chinatown? Which one? Magic jewelry. No. It's an aura shop. No, no, but I've been to Popular Jewelry. Have you been to Popular Jewelry? No, it's that. Is it an aura shop also? No, it's a jewelry store on Canal Street in New York. Uh, yeah. And you know it, it's what it is because um, on the outside of the store, it's just like huge photos of every rapper that stopped by in there. I'm screaming. Yeah. I've never bought a real piece of jewelry in my life. I used to go to Canal <laughs> Street. And buy fake chains because it was hilarious. Aw. Yeah. This is no, it wasn't aw. I would get like a Bart Simpson on a skateboard. No, I'm I, just saying aw, that's adorable. Yeah, I would get like an MMG chain. Yeah, that's hilarious. A, you know, it's a classic. More they don't sell that. as many fake chains now, but. Yeah, the value of all that shit is so teed. Yeah. It's so crazy how life is just like. You're not really into jewelry like that, though. I like functional jewelry. Mm. Like energetic, like this. It's from Magic Jewelry, actually. Right, right. But it's an oil shop. But the, so this is Burmese jade, yeah. which is like a lot higher quality than um, like what everybody else. The paler jade, like yeah. Chinese jade. And then this is citrine, but really high, like gem quality citrine. And then there's diamonds around here. But it's functional. The jade is like for high protection, and it also helps you not give a fuck what people think about you. Right, right. And then like the citrine is my birthstone. It also gives you like it's for your um, sacral chakra, so it's like mm. confidence, creativity. It's it just makes sense. Then diamond, that's like. At the very top of all your chakras, it's like an overview, a bright, yay, light, energy. Yeah. And then you have like this own bracelet, which I got um, from like the only place in the U.S. that Gandhi's ashes are scattered. Mm. And it has like a sapphire in it, which is again for protection and strength. Yeah. And I have opals here. I collect opals. So these are all opals about transformation, amplification. It brings like 
it's really it's a tough stone to wear because it brings all the tough shit to the surface. Yeah. And it does not take its time. It all happened. When I first started wearing Opal, I was miserable. It was like really hard for me. Wow. But uh, it's it's starting to even out. I'm like riding the wave now. But this is Australian Opal. This is Ethiopian Opal. This is Boulder Opal, which yeah. is like, uh, it's like when the Opal is stuck within, it forms within the rock. And this is Emerald, actually. And that's, um, your pinky is your heart channel based on Chinese medicine and like, you, the way you like your channels that travel to your heart. Mm. So your pinky is your heart channel. Green is the heart chakra. So I'm wearing an emerald on the pinky. Wow. And then this is my grandmother's ring um, that she wore. And this is my grandmother's ring also. And this is the matching cowrie shell, which is like goddess protection that me and my mom have wear matching together. That's right. And then the last jewelry, all my jewelry is functional. And then this is the, like a, I think it's the... 55 or million year old uh, fossil that became, it's a clam fossil that became mm. opalized over time. Yeah. And then this is um, a pendant that says Allah is from Dubai. And, you know, self explanatory. Allah. Yeah. I had one when I was little and it was cool. And this says gratitude. It's a matching chain that me, Sage, and Amber all wear together. Wow. And that's my jewelry. That's fire. <laughs> you have any other tattoos? Um, let's see. I have uh, this one. This is my wife's name. Oh! Cute. Yeah, we both have one, that was and so then cute. Um, the rest of them are just here. I don't That's have cool. anyone's else. Whoa! Have. Yeah. This is amazing. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. This is cool. amazing. Is that Luca on your belly? Yeah, I wanted to get it removed, but I, I thought it was just a. I thought it was like the control one. I thought I could just wash it off. Fuck you. It's there for life. This so, is yeah. wild. So, yeah, this is great. Thank you. Those are all really great. That line work on Luca is crazy. Yeah, so this guy Evan did it. Huh. Yeah. I want a portrait. I'm just not ready. Huh? <laughs> I'm just not ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's Luca's sign? Huh? What's his sign? Bitch. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiled bitch. That's a sign. Oh, that's me. <laughs> I was like, damn. Also my sign. I love Luca. Uh, yeah, but I also hate him. Okay. But that's, you know. I stopped him on the street once. Yeah. Years ago. You did? When he got his first modeling job with my ex boyfriend. You said what? Oh, nice. That happened. Oh. It was written down. Yeah. Um, I definitely. I don't know. I never know what the fuck is happening in, like, the world of the scene or if I'm, like, it's so weird how when you do work, you all of a sudden convince yourself that you're not failing yeah. and life is not happening without you. Yeah, it's, Only because you're doing work. Yeah. But like two days before when you weren't doing work, you were ready to get out of here. That's true. The whole planet. You were ready Holy to Holy shit. Yeah, that's, I go through that all the time. That's where I am right now. I'm at the it's, like, I started doing work and I'm like, I matter? I'm okay? I'm going to be all right? Yeah, it's you random fucking things. matter. It's, uh, it's crazy though. That, Even if no one hears or knows what you're working on, yeah, the fact no. that you know what you're working on, yeah. you'd be like, nah. <laughs> it's happening. It's like a full mentality because it's you have the same brain. It's Nothing changed. You're not any richer from two days ago or like anything it's just like your brain completely could just go oh my god what the fuck is happening it's like an real? alternate like, dimension what is this? like yeah it's really crazy yeah that's cool you i'm about. slipping to that a lot like back and forth of like what's real what's important yeah and what's not i don't know how old is big look too old to be acting like this yeah. she like four five yeah. i got her off the internet from, where in koreatown from some guy named brandon you still talk to him? At a video shoot. No, he disappeared a week after I bought her. Oh. <laughs> it was, she's the most expensive thing I've ever bought, actually. And he really? Me. Yeah, I was so dumb. I just saw her on the internet when I was laying like in bed looking at puppies. Yeah. And then she popped up. I was like, oh my God. Damn. I need. And then I went to the house and then there was like a burner phone. The man just never answered again. And I was stuck with this dog that was like a fake Frenchie, but like. Oh, it was really a catfish? Well yeah. Wow. Fully catfish, but she's a good girl. She's. <laughs> we love her so much. Damn. She means well. <sighs> All right. Thank you so much for being on my show. I'm so boring. I'm sorry.